we're all so busy living our lives. And then suddenly something cuts through that, something often very unexpected. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. A 31-year-old female with two stab wounds to the back. He was found to be in traumatic cardiac arrest. I can't feel any pulses. We're at George's hospital in Tutu. 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London, one of Britain's busiest a &E departments, under more pressure than ever. So do you want to watch, darling, or do you want to look away? This is the worst day ever. You never know what's coming in, and you just have to be ready for anything. Gas canisters exploded, 15% burns to hands, face. In a world of uncertainty, we see a life-changing event. I'm a and &E, I need to get out of here, please. When patients come in, something takes over. I'll be fine. I'm going to be very fine. A place where life... <laughs> Give me an A. Give me an A. <laughs> Love. OK, good lad. Well done. And loss... <laughs> ...unfold every single day. Did you enjoy the Queen's birthday yesterday? I watched yeah, the football. <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Don't worry. We get to see people who love one another in loads of different ways. Yes. And I think you can give someone the best care in the world, but really what they want is to hold the hand of the person that they love and for them to tell them that they're going to be OK. You're my hero. I'm so glad I met someone as weird as me. You know what? I was thinking the exact same thing. Here we go. So, she's got bilateral total hip replacements, and this one's obviously out. Oh, so I'll put my hands on her pelvis there like that, and you're just going to get her leg, and hopefully it's going to pop in like that. Yeah. yeah? In charge of resus today is A&E consultant, Will. I used to watch Casualty. Uh, ER was one of my favourites. All right. <laughs> Good. So you just hold on to the leg. George Clooney might have glamorised emergency medicine, but what happens on the TV in those dramas isn't what reality is like. So it doesn't seem to want to do it. So what do we need to do? You get onto the bed? The kind of the less glamorous stuff is like the backroom stuff that we have to do. Just stand up. Stand. That's it. So now your foot is going to go between your legs. OK. And now you're just going to pull straight up. We have to be teachers. We have to be managers, therapists quite a lot of the time. Are you the George Clooney of St. No, Clooney? I'm not. No, I'm not George Clooney. I'm the Stanley Tucci. Try and get on. That's in. That's in. Oh. I just needed a twist. I've been qualified 20 years, and we see a lot in the emergency department. You know, you hear these horrendous stories of what has happened to the patient. I personally don't think there's anybody controlling that. Hello, Annie. So, I'm not sure I believe in luck. I mean, luck is just something that has happened by chance or hasn't happened by chance. Hello, St George's Emergency Department. Where's that from? Did you get any analgesia? 
Cheers, bye. Adult male trauma called by air, 25 minutes. We just got a hems trauma just coming in. It's a young man, driver, head on collision. Airbags deployed, the car has rolled over. He's got a head injury, chest injury, abdominal injury, and a pelvic injury. The 29 year old man is being airlifted to St. George's after being involved in a high speed car crash. Uh, head on collisions can be life threatening. All the energy is transferred between the two vehicles as they hit each other. So the head-on is the worst type of road traffic accident to have. Yeah, can I have the helipad response team? I have an adult trauma call to reassess the... Is that the helicopter? Did you hear it? For patients to walk away from a high-speed head-on collision is relatively rare. to landing at base when our pilot looked over and saw the accident and it had just happened. So we just happened to be above this accident at the time it occurred. We circled around and spoke to dispatch to see if they needed our assistance it's because we could see from the air that it looked like a very serious accident. But you have to be prepared for the worst. If you don't plan for the worst, you'll not be ready to deal with it when it happens. Okay. Yeah, well. Okay, ready, brace, move. I was here at home and he was on a stag do. Only about an hour drive away from home. And we were supposed to be going out for lunch. So we've got suction, we've got O2, uh, we've got primary. An hour went past and he hadn't come home and you just kind of think, the traffic's bad. And then it was kind of two or three hours that he was late. It made me really stressed and anxious. Tried to call him, but there was no answer. We're just getting one just off the aircraft now. We're getting straight to CT, guys. We did a handover in there, is that all right? My worst fear was that something's happened and I wouldn't see him again. That that stupid conversation that we had in the car park <laughs> where he was eating a sandwich might be the last time I spoke to him. I don't even really remember if I told him I loved him. Twenty-nine-year-old David has been airlifted to St George's following a head-on car collision. This is David. He's a twenty-nine-year-old male. He was a driver of a small compact car, swerved to avoid an ambulance, and uh, struck head-on another uh, minivan-type vehicle, which ended up on its side in the ditch. Uh, a significant amount of chest pain, abdomen. Uh, bruising and tender in the lower quadrants bilaterally uh, and persistently attacking cardi. If you have a young, healthy patient, they may not be displaying a lot of signs of injury, but the internal injuries are the hardest to determine, so bleeding from different sources, uh, tears to their major arteries and uh, damage to their abdominal organs. And knowing what's going to be the right intervention is difficult without the knowledge that you get from looking inside the body with the CT. David's girlfriend Emily is at home, unaware that he's been rushed to St George's. It made me really worry that he wasn't back. If something happened, I'd like to think I was the person he would tell first. I tried to call him. I don't remember how many times, but his phone just went to answer the phone. My 
first met Dave at a friend's house at New Year's Eve six years ago. I remember thinking that he was like a good kind of four or five inches too short. He was great, he was really funny. He just had a way about him that I thought, I want to sit next to him for dinner. So I did, I just moved. There was an immediate friendship, like him meeting the minds and just, I got his sense of humor and he got mine and we just spent more and more time together and he moved in really quickly. Okay, that injection's about to go in now. He wants me to feel special and loved. He would never forget any anniversary, birthday, nothing. I think markers of time and commitment are really important to Dave. We want just a simple, happy life. Okay, it's all done. I think given my family history, it's important to know that you can rely on someone. tomorrow. We're attending the same funeral. I don't know if that's really the same as hanging out with. Thank three, you. Just take a seat. Three, All right, let's see if we can get a Starbucks in the mood. But I'm not sure that's going to be appropriate. What are you going to do, Simon A &E? Well, no, I'll just get you to meet him outside. <laughs> John Snow wasn't dead. What? Of course John Snow isn't dead. He was presenting the news recently. No, oh, John Snow without an H. Who's that? From Game of Thrones. You don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't think you need to watch Game of Thrones to be aware of the whole, is he dead or isn't he dead thing. The thing is, he was dead, but he's come back from the dead. He's alive again. Ninety four year old Mary was brought to St George's after falling down a flight of stairs at her daughter's home. She has hematoma to the back of her head. Okay. She's got the one on the front of her head with a small aberration. She's also got a bruise on the right scapula and pain with pain. Yeah. BP is raised at 207 over 91. Thank you. I'm Dr. Adrian, one of the consultants. We're going to have a listen to your chest, yeah. okay? Just let me get home. <laughs> we'll, we'll, let's take it step by step. Doctors are concerned that because of her age, she could be susceptible to serious injuries to her chest, neck and spine. Any pain in your chest where I'm touching? No, no, but whatever you do, don't press too heavy. OK. <laughs> because I'm a delicate old man. OK, fine. Man. <laughs> but no, no tenderness Can where I'm touching? I okay. a bit there. Down here? Down to the right. OK, yeah. so, OK, right lower rib cage tenderness. No, Mary's daughter, Jenny, and son-in-law, David, followed Mary to the hospital. I've never known my mother to have an accident before. I was standing at the bottom of the stairs and mum was making her way up. And all of a sudden she said, oh, and then crashed all the way down backwards. All sorts of things rushed through your mind. I thought she was dead. 
How old are you? Ninety-four. Okay, don't look my grandmother. It's good. Yeah. Okay. There you go, my love. Thank you, dear. My name's Simon. I'm oh, one hello, of the nurses. Simon. You've been a naughty girl tonight. I know. We're mm. ridiculous. Oh, well. well. We'll sort it out. I hope you're advised by a great-grandson, Simon. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll soon find <laughs> out, <laughs> won't we? <laughs> Hello. Oh, you look very glamorous. Did you have to phone for an ambulance, David? Sorry? Did you have to yes, phone? Yes, yes. yes. You were unconscious. But it may not have been necessary. I know. Well, um, no. Hopefully it's not. Can I discharge myself? No. no. My mum has always been a forceful lady and knows her own mind very well and can tell everybody else what their mind is as well. <laughs> Don't we? No. <laughs> Won't find much in my head. <laughs> Doctors are sending Mary for a CT scan to discover the full extent of her injuries. Right, we'll be back shortly. I think my mother would hate it if she was treated as an elderly lady. She wants to continue to live happily on her own. I think she would feel it very difficult if she lost her independence. She would hate it. She would hate it. Do you want me to teach you the baby sign that Amelia and I learned the other day in our baby sign course? OK, OK, yeah, I can learn a new skill. Okay. Eat. Oh, that's that's not hard. Banana. It's not easier to show her a banana and say, "Do you want this?" <laughs> Saint George's, any uh, medical trauma? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In which leg? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, bye. Adult male trauma, 12 minutes. Adult male trauma, 12 minutes. An 18-year-old man is being rushed to A&E after sustaining a severe leg injury playing football. He's had 10 milligrams of morphine and um, 80 of ketamine. His mum's been waiting for him at their home in Brixton. He was hours late. He was hours late to come home. It was like, I just didn't know what's going on, but you know, I was trying to get, call him. Hi, can I get an adult trauma call to a &E Recess, please? It was unusual that he didn't stick to a plan that we had made. He's not the type of child to let me down, especially at the last minute. And I needed Darnell to look after his brother. Then his dad called me. He said, um, no, nah, Darnell's had an accident. And it's a bad one. I was very worried. He's got a fractured left femur. He's only 18. Registrar Emma will be the doctor leading the case. Your femur bone is your thigh bone um, that connects your hip to your knee. It's the biggest bone in the body, and it must have taken some impact or some force to break that bone. It's huge stress in the body, so you worry because if you've broken your femur, there could be other injuries and life-threatening injuries. This is Darnell. Darnell's 18 years old. He's been playing football. 
when he's been tackled in a compromising position, he's gone down over his left mid-shaft femur, which appears to be fractured. And he's had 80 milligrams, 80 milligrams of ketamine. And he did experience quite a lot of pain when we put the left Kendrick traction spin device on him. All Thanks right. so much. Right. Okay, guys, we'll jump in and just. Oh, relax. my leg! No, don't do that to my leg. We have to take it oh, off. Fucking okay. Hurts. Oh shit! Oh! Ah! No! Right. Don't, guys. Don't make me feel pain, please. I beg, I beg you. Trachea central. Any pain in your chest? Yeah? Come on, no. I know that looks hurt, though. I can feel the. I can feel my toes. Okay, that's hey, good. Hey, 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 my toes. And he's just yeah. loving the ketamine bit, yeah. yeah. Ketamine is a very powerful drug. It gives good pain relief. Paramedics do use it when a patient is quite distressed. It works really quickly, and also chills the patient out a bit. So you said you were, you said you were running, and then what? Yeah. Happened? Then we like we like collided and then we fell on me like in it. Uh, why, is, why is my fucking accent changing? Why, why is my accent changing? I mean, I'm, I'm a Londoner. Doctors will carry out X-rays to Darnell's pelvis and lower limbs to uncover the full extent of his injuries. You feeling a bit warmer? Yeah. Oh, you are a joker. Eighteen-year-old Darnell arrived in recess after severely breaking his thigh bone playing football. Ooh, he just clocked up 150 miles an hour. His mum Natalie is at home looking after Darnell's younger brother. I was 16 when I found out that I was expecting Darnell. I was skipping back from doctors. <laughs> I was over the moon. When I told Darnell's dad I'm pregnant, he was so happy about it. But there's a couple of people that said you shouldn't have a child, you're only 16. I suppose they just didn't know what I could cope with. You can't explain it, you know. When you first see him and, and you hold him and you think, you're not going to be able to just, like, give that back, you know. You're going to have to take care of it. <laughs> when I left the hospital, I walked with him on my shoulder. He was that, he was so small I could hold him like that. And I walked with him on my shoulder all the way from Tootin, St George's, through Tootin Broadway, Tootin Beck, all the way, all the way through Ballum. I just was so proud I was walking with this baby. I'd just come out of hospital and I'm walking all the way home to Clapham South. Yeah, proud, I was so proud. I couldn't believe it was mine. Yo. What happened to you, son? Darnell's friend Matthew was with him at the time of the accident. Yo. Come give me a hug. Nah, G. No way you like that. I don't want to break down one. What? No, just touch your forehead on me. I've got you, Matt, on me. Straight on me. Nah, G, that's gay. Oh, that's gay. <laughs> oh, at least you're not dead. There's a start. I knew it was bad when I saw it. I knew it was bad when I heard it. I heard it. I heard snap. Yo. Give me one sec. Uh, he can hear you. Yes, mommy. I love you. I'm so sorry. I was going to come home. He's playing football, has fractured mid shaft femur. <laughs> He had quite a lot of ketamine with the ambulance and was bouncing off the walls when he came in here. Matthew's a good friend, you know, Mum. 
No, I'm not. Man. Don't lie. That's got you leaning. Mom. Hello. Love yeah. you. Yeah, I love you too. Yeah. When this happened, I was calling Ken because I was at the garden. The only person to come running was the dog. <gasps> Didn't want to lick her, did he? He did, yeah. Uh -huh. but he's on a raw food diet, so he's used to raw chicken oh, and pork. Oh, my God. And I think he just saw my leg and thought... Mm. He didn't, though, did he? No, he just enjoyed being near it. I yeah. bet he did. Twenty-nine-year-old David was flown to St George's following a high-speed car accident. David, do you know somebody called your family? No. Do you know the numbers? No. Do you live around here? Oh, you got family there, parents, or your girlfriend? I remember being sat on the sofa for about five hours. His phone didn't connect, it was just dead. So you're literally just waiting. It just felt awful. You're at mercy of whatever comes. I think it did remind me. When I was 17, my mum wasn't very well. She was diagnosed with cancer in the summer. There's a lot of waiting when someone's ill. You wait for results and you, you wait for things and... We found a charger for your iPhone. Thank you so much. She was ill for six months or so. And she died in the February. So not the first time I've waited. I naively thought that hearing his voice would be the reassurance I was looking for. It hurts a lot. I might have a few broken bones, but they're worried about my internal. So I've had a few feet down. But he just gave me a whole new wave of unanswered questions. Is that why I the results? They don't air ambulance people lightly. I love you. What's the tachycardia about? Do they know at the moment? It's a bit of hypertensive, isn't it? Was he tachycardia like this when he came in? Yeah, but we all thinking it might was because of what happened and everything, so... Yeah. Tachycardia means a fast heart rate. A heart rate should be 60 to 80 beats per minute, so anything above that could be described as a tachycardia. I'm just waiting for the CT report. There are a lot of reasons why your heart rate may go up. And in trauma, one of them would be bleeding. Patients can initially seem to be relatively uninjured, especially young people, because they can compensate for injuries very well without showing any of the external signs. But then they fall off the cliff when they can't compensate any further and will rapidly deteriorate in front of you. Mary, 
do a body scan for you, okay? Great grandmother Mary was admitted to A&E earlier today after falling down a flight of stairs. Okay. So you just keep nice and still for me, okay? You just in case there's an issue with your neck. Well, I'm sure there isn't. Well, then you don't need this scan, do you? No. I agree. And I have been nuisance. No, this. you're not. Right, no we'll worries. be as quick as we can, Suta, all right? My relationship with my mum has always been special because I'm an only child. My father was a member of the D-Day landings and then he was posted to the Far East. So for the first five years, I was with her more or less on her own. Um, I was always her little girl. Sometimes I think she was strict and sometimes she was uh, an absolute pussycat. We used to go to variety shows. I think we went to see Dickie Valentine once. And I was only about six and really shouldn't have been up that late. Need to give you an injection of an x-ray dye to see what's going on, all right? My mum was very glamorous. She worked in the rag trade, so. She certainly knew a lot about fashion and what was in at the time and sort of modern in that respect. She was quite a modern mum. I've never known her be without a job. I was very proud to have a working mum. I think it taught me to stand on my own two feet. Breathe in and hold your breath. Normally. My mum's always been a strong, resilient person. She was distraught when my father died. But I saw her also rally herself and get herself together to carry on. We're done. And she's always been extremely supportive. And she was more like a friend in some respects than a mum. So that scan's all finished. So what will happen now is one of the doctors will have a look at it and if everything's okay, we can take the collar off and start sitting you up slowly. Thank you, dear. All right. Can I help? Oh, OK. In which London borough would you find Wimbledon Park? That's interesting. It is quite interesting. That is quite interesting. So I'm thinking the answer must be Wandsworth. The park is in Merton, the pond is in Wandsworth. How could the pond be in Wandsworth if the park is in Merton? Very interesting. But all of this I've read on my Trivial Pursuit card. Well, very good, very good. I need to charge my phone. Hey, I'm, I don't want to unplug the machine and you end up dying. I need to charge my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm not on the life support. You better not be, because the sound's coming unplugged, because this is getting on charge. No, no, don't unplug it for now. No, I'm joking. Mm -hmm. Darnell is in recess with a severe break to his thigh bone. Waiting with him is friend Matthew and girlfriend Georgia. Hey. Did you see the fracture? It's a segmental spiral. If he to break, you'd have significant energy going through that. So probably he was, he was twisting while he fell. Hmm. A spiral fracture is one crack, but it's kind of gone raw in the bone. Any fracture of the femur is serious. We need to get these patients to theatre as quickly as we can. It can have long-term impact, and people may not get full function back again in that leg. Hello, it's me again. Yeah, right. Your left thigh bone <laughs> has broken in two places, OK? All right. 
Oh. So it's like it's like a long spiral fracture. Yeah. Oh, should I? We gonna fix that? So we're gonna fix that oh. uh, with a nail. We're gonna put a small rod down your femur. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. So worry, you'll be all right. Okay. Darnell will be sent for urgent surgery in order to prevent permanent damage to his leg. Ooh. What a day. What a day. I know. My luck in it. Darnell's a big support for me. And we're very close. We don't let each other down. I don't let him down. He doesn't let me down. You know, that's how we are. That's how we work. Darnell, we're going to bring you upstairs. Oh, yay, thank you. He likes having responsibilities. He does a lot for his family. I am a single mum, and there's a 13-year gap between him and his brother. And he'll come back home, pick up his brother, feed him, and he doesn't have to. He's always just my first choice. And keep toward these. He is officially a man, but he's always my little boy, always. I don't know what I'll do without him. Any 94-year-old Mary was brought into St George's after falling backwards down 14 steps. But try and get me home. Hello, my lovely. Hello. Hello. I'm Jess. I'm one of the doctors. Yeah. Your scan shows that there's no problem with your neck. All right. I'm going to take the collar off now. Oh, thank God. Righty ho. Stay nice and still for me. I'm sorry I'm such a nuisance. You're not a nuisance. But you don't want old dears of 94. Oh, that's my favourite. Do you feel 94? No. Of course I don't. Inside me there's this 30, 40 year old. I just don't want to go into a home. I've lived in a home for a week. I didn't like it. Too many old people there. <laughs> you couldn't have a conversation. One man would be stone deaf, and unfortunately the other woman may be away with the fairies. And, uh, no. Everybody wants to live their own lives. Everybody wants to try and be independent. Natural way of living is the only way I know. Right, so your scan shows you've got lots of rib fractures. Oh, no. Okay. I think that you may need to stay with us for the night. Oh, no. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's not your fault. It's my fault for being so stupid. I must look a wreck. You don't look a wreck. Everybody knows you can't go on forever. We don't talk about these sort of things, really. We don't talk about her demise. Hello, Simon. Hello, nice, nice to see you. you sat up. I've really shown myself up, I'm afraid. Oh, no, you no, definitely you haven't. didn't. You've done the opposite. You're showing Twice lots of much. other people up. Thank you for being so kind. That's Charming. okay. We'll get you a cup of tea, okay? Mm. I worry about her. I always phone her every day. And then lift up my back and see if there's an abrasion. Yes. No. Oh, your glasses are there. No wonder it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I call every day because, because I love her and I want to check that she's had a nice day. Are you checking? She's still here. Yes. I am checking she's still here. So we're going to see you. Bye, Mary. Bye. 
Thank you very much. Absolute I pleasure. Hope I'm going home. Oh, I, well, later. I've got a funny feeling you're going to make it happen. Please don't. I don't know what I'll do when I lose her. Be a big hole in my life. I hope that I will be strong enough to carry on like she has been. Whilst doctors await the full CT report, David has been sent for further x-rays. Hello, sir. I'm Elisa, one of the nurses. We wait for your results, OK? His girlfriend, Emily, is on her way to St George's. He always comes across as fearless. And that day, he wasn't. It's just horrible to hear somebody you love like that, because you can't reassure them because you don't know anything. So he was waiting, the same that I was waiting. Doctors have now received the full results of David's CT scan. Hello, my name's Ted, I'm one of the doctors. I'm just going to have a chat with you about the CT scan. It's a long drive. It was, I think, an hour and a half or two hours. But it felt like five. Every light went red. Every light. I think pulling into the car park was possibly the lowest I'd felt. And I was on the phone to him, telling him I was coming in. And I wasn't sure what I was about to find. And then I got through the doors at any and he was just standing there. Totally fine. Except for a plaster on his foot. I can't explain to you what it felt like to wake up in that car with the smoke and glass and smell. Then just lying in that bed. I needed Emily to be by my side. I remember two doctors coming into the room and I thought, here we go, here's the bad news. He said, we've got a broken toe, we need to strap it up. And thinking, why are you telling me that? And I remember asking him then, well, what about everything else? What about my other injuries? And he said, there are no other injuries, it's a miracle. And I just felt like the sun must have been shining on me that day. <laughs> You're not going in the driver's seat, Dave. Never again. Still can't quite believe it. It's probably for the best, isn't it? Yeah. I can't really. No. But get back on the horse, Dave.
I feel way more fragile than I realised. I'm more careful with my leg. No more football. <laughs> uh, if I kick a ball around, I'm not playing any matches. I'm well past my sell-by date, as they say. I wouldn't be as cheeky to uh, say I want to be 100. But uh, if I'm spared, so be it. I think people have always thought that I land on my feet a little, so maybe I am a little lucky. But I think I've used all of my luck up now, so no more crashes. I won't be playing paper anytime soon. I think uh, I've used up all my luck for one life, probably. Hello, St George's. By air. Hello, uh, draw for 20 minutes. This lorry just came round and knocked her over then went over her legs. And suddenly I heard this great big bang. The ladder was sprawled on the landing and he was flat along it, twitching all over. And I thought, my goodness, he's dying in front of me. 